Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator. And I gotta tell you, before we get started on this, look at look at this uh, crazy lump on my on my hand here. It's hard to see like the discoloration on it because I've got you know weird lighting in here. But man, I fucked that thing up earlier. Oh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> it may not look at, you know super bad at at first glance, but <laughs> it does not feel good. After work, I went and helped my dad uh, move a couple of safes because um, we, we moved my grandpa into a, a care facility over the weekend. And so uh, we had to go pick up a couple of safes from his old house to, to move in. And uh, so my dad and I were, were taking care of that whole thing. And as we're picking up the second one, we, we moved it into the hallway and we were just going to pick it up and take it to the truck. So it wasn't like a very big one, but it's definitely way heavier than what one person could handle. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're getting ready to lift that thing and pick it up, and the hallway is kind of sort of narrow, and so, um, and so we lift it, and right as we lift it, you know, we were right next to one of the doors, and the door knob, I think, I think was locked, I, I think, because it, it had, like, no give on it at all, and... You know, I'm lifting and my my hand just goes right through that thing and it hurts so fucking bad. Oh my god. Like I I'll be I am amazed that I didn't drop the damn safe on my own foot because you know, the I get the only thing that probably kept me going was the sheer adrenaline cuz I just let out a like an involuntary yell. You know, like normally I would have just been like, "Oh, you know, I would have gripped my teeth and and probably grunted or made some other weird noise." But this one, I just straight up yelled. It it hurt so, so absurdly bad. I just went, "Yeah!" And I looked at it initially, and you know, it was it was red, and I I definitely could see like a you know like the initial contact point of where it hit, but. Just within like 30 seconds, that thing turned just straight up black and blue, and there was red all over it, and it, it just started swelling immediately, and it definitely hurts intensely to the touch. I know I didn't break anything, because I was able to, you know, continue moving the, the safe over, and we were able to get it to where we needed to go, but oh man, that hurt like just fucking madness. Warmed over. It was like, it felt like, you know, it, was, it felt like putting your hand in a deep fryer for a second like the pain not like I've ever put my hand in a deep fryer that I could actually <laughs> you know like actually calculate that pain or really relate it to that because I've never done that before but if I had to imagine it felt like just my hand was on fire for a second and now I just have like this you know dull pain so I have to hold the controller weird like I can't even like put my I can't even wrap my hand around the controller very well so I have like two fingers supporting the controller you know, keeping it in place while my thumb's obviously doing the dirty work over there. But it is not a comfortable deal right now, I, I can tell you that confidently. So, as you can see, we are we are back in the saddle again, and we're doing some more rally raises because I'm, I am greatly enjoying those, and we need to switch camera angles for a moment when we do this jump. There we go. The, the, the viewing angle that they give you when you do that in this, in this view is just terrible. You lose all all sense of direction on where you're going with that. You're just like, oh, well, yeah, let me stare at the sky for a moment, because that's really going to help me, you know, figure out where the hell I'm supposed to be going at the end of all this. But everything looks to be like we're probably going to be fine here. Um, and we're winning this easily enough that we'll probably, probably do okay when we move up one difficulty as well for the second race in it. But we'll uh, we'll take care of that in a little bit. I just want to kind of get through the first round of a lot of these, just so we got a nice little bit of variety. Because it is the spice of life, and it's nice and peppery and buttery, and it's it's soft. As soon as it hits your tongue, it just melts. You know, it's it's like a nice buttery croissant or a croissant, if that's how they even pronounce that. I don't know. I was told by somebody that that you pronounce it croissant. You know, but that's probably not correct at all. <laughs> <laughs> because why should you ever believe somebody that's not actually French on that? 
So, yeah, what are you going to do about that? But, anywho, that's, uh, so that's what's going on with that. You can kind of see it there. You can, it's hard to see the swelling, but, ugh. It's actually not quite as discolored as it was earlier. It's, it's mainly back down to just being red. I've already got, like, some, uh, some Arnica pain cream on it. It's, uh, really good, well, you know, since I haven't used the buzzer too much lately. Uh, on Adam's Health Tips, where you learn shit whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah! Uh, Arnica is a, it's a herbal remedy of sorts, and its uh, prime function is to help um, reduce the, you know, reduce the effects of, of trauma and, you know, bruising and aches and pains and such, especially for injuries that just happened. So, as soon as I got home, as I was, uh, you know, taking a class C dump, I don't really know what that really entails, I don't know. If, if somebody actually made a an actual uh, graph or, you know, classification of what, you know, taking a dump would be like, I don't know necessarily what a class C one would be, but whatever. While I was doing that, I, you know, grabbed some of the Arnica cream off the counter and I, you know, liberally applied a nice healthy dose of it to my hand, and so... It's uh, feeling slightly better. Uh, well, while we're doing this Tahiti maze thing here, I got a, I got a story for you. It's an interesting one. It's a, uh, it's not quite like the story that I told you the other night, where uh, I had you know another full-scale panic attack while I was sleeping. But this one was most certainly a weird thing that happened. It was very strange, and uh, I don't really, I still don't really know what to make of it. I, I think it's really more of a case of very very uncomfortable coincidental happenstance I think is kind of where this is gonna fall but you be the judge I'll let you guys be the judge on this one so what happened was I was over I was over at Michaela's house the other night and uh, you know we were just having a quiet night in and everybody had gone to bed already and we decided we wanted to watch a movie and so we're, we're scrolling around through uh, Comcast's you know on-demand set of movies and because we're in October you know, they, they added a nice new chunk of horror movies to the mix, and so that was awesome. So we're, we were like, oh, we got to find something good and scary to watch. Or at least something, you know, that may not be scary, but at least it's entertaining to watch. And so, when you get into something like that, what better a way to stoke the fire than to watch some good old-fashioned The Exorcism of Emily Rose? Which, uh, I can't remember the, the main character's name. Not like her act, not like, you know, her character in the movie but the actual actress that played her role, I don't remember what her name is, and it always escapes me, but I have a cousin, dead serious, looks, she's like a, she's like her doppelganger, it's freaking creepy. Like, the, the resemblance that she bears to this, to this actress is nuts. It's, it's, uh, for those of you that may not have seen the movie, she's also the girl that played, um, Dexter's sister, uh, she played, uh, Deborah Morgan on, uh, on Dexter. And so, uh, yeah, just like, I can't, I can't look at my cousin without thinking about those two things now. <laughs> it's, it's uber creepy. Anywho, so we decided to watch The Exorcism of Emily Rose, because nothing says, you know, let's have a quiet night in, like watching a, a movie about a girl that got possessed by numerous demons and had to have them exercised, and it killed her eventually. Um, but, anywho, so we're watching it, and we're, we're having, we're having a, we're having a gay old time with it. You know, we were, we were having a blast with it. I haven't seen it in a, in a few years, and so... You know, it's cool to go back and watch it again. Here's where things got weird and creepy. Was while we're watching it, you know, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary had happened the entire time. Not, not one iota of weird stuff happened the entire time until this exact moment. It is the moment in the movie. Not to spoil it for you, but <laughs> spoilers ahead. There's an exorcism that happens. Thus, the name, <laughs> the exorcism of Emily Rose. So it's the part towards the end of the movie where there, where the priest is actually, you know, like preparing to perform the exorcism in her bedroom, and you know he's like getting all the preparations done. And he's telling all the family members like this is what I need you guys to do. So you know, no matter what, no matter, no matter what, always do exactly what I say and don't listen to anything that it says. And he gets ready to open up his, you know, his his book of of things. You know, I, I don't think that it's actually the Bible. I, you know, I think it's like an extra, like an, a separate, like manual of, of, you know, of scripture and things to say, um, you know, specifically for exercising demons and such. And so in that, um, the very second that he like opened that stuff up and got ready to say things, I kid you not, 
the TV, uh, the TV just w it cut out to black immediately. Like, it just cut out to black immediately, but on the screen, like, going from, like, the top middle, cascading across, like, the right side, going down in, like, a, di like a diagonal, uh, in, like, a diagonal fashion towards the bottom were, like, these weird white scan lines that were just, like, flickering. Uh, but they weren't, like, you know, they weren't, like, panning downwards, like, you know, having, like, the screen, like, scrolling like some of the old ones used to do. It was just this bizarre... It faded out to black, it did all those weird, like, white scan lines, and it just did it just did that for a little while. And when that happened, Mikhail and I looked over at each other like we were just waiting for the TV to come back on, and when it didn't, we were just starting to sit there looking at each other like, um... Is this weird to you, or... <laughs> or is this just, like, a very strange bit of coincidence? She's like... She's like, um... I don't know how I feel about what's going on right now. Why did it do that? She's like... I was like, has the TV ever done this before with any other movie that you've ever watched? She's like, no. I've never watched a movie on this TV where, at any given moment, it just randomly stopped working. You know? It's like, I, I've watched other horror movies, and I've watched tons of other things out here. And I've never had the TV just just cut out to black like this. I've never seen these weird scan lines before. And so I was, I was like, okay, I'm... Uh, shit. No, 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 no. That is not what I needed. That is literally the last thing I needed. Okay. This is bad. This is bad. Luckily, there's two more laps. We'll, we'll be fine. But she's like, yeah, I've never, I've never had that happen before. I don't know what the hell happened. So I was like, okay. What I'll do, because the movie was still going, like, we looked down at the cable box and the movie was totally still happening. It's like, okay, well, maybe I'll just turn the TV off and then turn it back on. Maybe that will, you know, like, kind of reset the TV and it'll keep going. So, oh my god, jeez, man. So, I turn the TV off. I turn it back on, and instead of, and instead of it, you know, resetting to going back to the movie, or even giving me those same, you know, the same black screen with the weird scan lines, then it just switched over to just, you know, just pure static on the TV, like it was doing, like, the snow thing, where it was just... You know, we're sitting here like, what the fuck? This is so weird. Why... And that's... It was at that moment that both of us, you know, more or less right around the same time period, and I just... I actually just got chills just, like, recapping this moment. But it's, it, as, it, as it just sat there, as the movie's still going on, because we looked at the cable box and it didn't say, you know, that the system had reset or that, you know, the movie had stopped. It said it was still going. It just was on static. And it was at that very moment that we were like, I think we need to turn this off. I think it's, I think we have now hit the moment where we probably just need to mail it in and probably go to bed. Because not only is it like 1.30 in the morning, but this is just really extra weird and not okay. <laughs> so with that, you know, we turned it off and and you know, we just went to bed and that was kind of the end of it. But and then we went late the very next night we watched uh, Disturbia out there and we were kind of, you know, keeping our head on a swivel to see if the TV would do that again. Never did that again. And so we were just like, I think that maybe that was a sign that maybe we weren't supposed to watch the rest of that, you know, watch the actual exorcism thing, because, you know, sometimes the world will give you a sign like that, and that had to be our sign, because I, I have also, on my own accord, watched that movie many a time and never had that happen either. On TVs that were much older and in much worse condition, um, with older cable boxes that were, you know, older and in much worse and used condition, and that's never happened. So, I don't know. You guys, you guys be the judge. Do you think that that was maybe just, like, a very, a very strange, you know, course of just random chance that, you know, at the very moment that, you know, we're getting ready to watch an exorcism that the TV just randomly did that and it was just purely by chance? <laughs> and it just so happened to be probably the most hilariously bad timing that you could have for that <laughs> to cause, you know, to strike one with paranoia? Or do you think that maybe, just maybe, it was, you know, it was like a moment where the T, like, that happened and it was like a, a sign maybe from God himself saying don't fucking do it, man. You, you really should not be filling your head with this in this moment. Um, and, you know, it was like a sign from a higher power saying it is not smart 
to be filling your mind with this sort of thing right now, late at night, where the you know the demonic witching hour is approaching, and it's really not good to be, you know, doing that whole thing. Fifty percent achieved. Hey, hey, we're there. Oh yes. Oh, it's the it's the the, the thing. It's the Corvette. Oh yes. Oh, oh, I've been wanting that thing. Oh, it's so sick! I totally didn't... I did not realize that they'd give you a prize at 50% like that. That's so sick! Oh, I gotta, I gotta go look at it. I gotta go look at it. I gotta see it. I gotta see it with my own face. Oh, the C5R. Oh, yes! <laughs> cool. That's awesome. I'm so happy to use this. We're gonna use this in the Dream Car Championship. That's what it's gonna be. I'm... I am pumped. We are going to use that exact thing. Game status? <laughs> oh, I'm loving it. All right, guys. Well, we're going to stop right here. I have some grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup that's waiting in the kitchen. Um, and so I'm hungry, and I'm going to go eat that. So with that said, my friends, we have reached 50%, and it was awesome. So when we come back next time, we're going to start up the Dream Car Championship, and we're going to dominate with our new plaything. So until then, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching. Do not watch The Exorcism of Emily Rose at like 1.30 in the morning because things can happen, and it's not good. So you guys take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.